Well, time now to welcome a guest to the inside sleeve. I'm joined by virtuoso wood player Joseph Tawadras. Hello. Hey, hey, Robbie. How are you? Good. It's so nice of you to say that. You know. Well, look, virtuoso I was a wood player. Yeah, I was wondering. That's how you're described. You're described as a virtuoso mm. wood player, and I, I do wonder when does uh, when do you go from being a very proficient yeah, wood player to, to a virtuoso? virtuoso. Well, Is there a line you I'm cross? I'm not sure. I think that term's just thrown or thrown around. You know, master. You know, virtuoso. It's whatever. It's just a player, really. It's yeah. just another word. Beef it up. Yeah. You know, but you got to you got to add the rhetoric. That's what you you got to do. do. That said, you do get recognised around the world as mm. uh, one of the great players of this particular instrument. Yeah. Well, it's, it's a, I guess it's a privilege and, and an honour that it's uh, yeah that that's bestowed upon me. You know. So it's um yeah it's great. I just I, I'm just doing what I love and, yeah. and very passionate about the wood and and. It's well, well, let's great. talk about the instrument for for a little yep. while. It's uh you know you, you're cradling it on your lap at the moment. It's Essentially, a, a lute, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's it's the ancestor of the lute. So, basically, the uh, the lute comes from the oud, and then the 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 guitar becomes uh, fr- the guitar comes from the lute. So, yeah. it's a very historically significant instrument. And the word lute, I explain it probably a gazillion times, but yeah. uh, the word lute comes from al oud. So, oud lute, mm. very similar words. And, and it actually used to be a hieroglyphic symbol. In, yeah, that's right. In ancient, in ancient Egypt. Yeah, the hieroglyphic. Uh, letter is Nefa, and uh, yeah, you see it on reliefs and, and stuff like that. Again, very historical and very uh, beginning of time stuff. Here. Yeah. You were born in Egypt. You came to Australia very young yeah. when you were only three. Uh, was it always going to be the Ud that you would play? No, I, I wanted to play trumpet, actually. That was because my, my uncle was a great trumpet player in Egypt, so I really wanted to play trumpet. And then I, I came across the Ud in a, in a movie, in an old Arabic movie, and I just fell in love with it. And um, you know, I, the I, look or the sound? Well, the sound, and the, well, the, the movie was very glorified. It was about an Egyptian composer, so it's quite glorified in the way they made him appear, and um, maybe that attracted me. But um, yeah, I, I then found out that my grandfather was a great Ud player in Cairo, and you know, mixed with all the nostalgia and the stories, you know, I was really keen to learn it, and mm. I fell in love with it. I'm still in love with it, which is great. Well, what you've been doing with the Yud is what is so exciting. You can obviously play it as a single instrument and we're about mm-hmm. to hear that. Yeah. But you have this uh, great fascination with trying to slot it into all these new musical landscapes that generally aren't considered the natural home of an instrument like the Yud. Yeah, well, I think it, it, it comes from my inst- uh, my interest of music and the love for the instrument. You know, it's uh, it's keeping myself fresh and, and challenging myself. So I, I listen to all the players that I, I collaborate with and I love them as players and love them as, you know, CDs in the car or something to, yeah. to listen to them. So it's a real privilege that I get the chance to play with them. And, yeah. and well, you, well, we'll talk about that because you've, you've just recently you've played with some incredible yeah. musicians in the States. Of course, yeah. uh, you also played with the Australian Chamber Orchestra mm-hmm. recently. Uh, a fairly broad range. Yeah. Of so music. I've been very lucky to get those platforms, but that's all through really, uh, you know, the love of the instrument, the love of music mixed in with a bit of luck and, yeah. and um, you know, the way... Uh, the world brings people together. All right. Well, let's take a little listen to it because it, it is a beautiful sounding instrument with other players, but also when you strip it back just to its own mm-hmm. uh, individual self, um, something quite extraordinary too. What would you like to play for us? Um, I'll, I'll play a, uh, a piece which is originally a duet for wooden double bass. Uh, it's a piece called Give or Take. That's kind of a, a faster, faster tune. So we'll see if I can uh, uh, be up to the challenge. So here it is. This is Give or Take.
Wonderful stuff. Joseph Tawadra is playing uh, the Ood for you today here on the Inside Sleeve, and that one called Give or Take. It's furious, isn't it? I mean, you really <clears throat> get into that, uh, into that, the speed of it. Uh, it's kind of more of a modern piece. So it's uh, the Ood is really quite, uh, quite a mel- melodic instrument, so a melody line. So that with that one, that's kind of got chords and yeah. and things like that. So yeah, no, but you really do get into it. So it's an instrument that can be fiery and and happening, but it can be soft and slow and mm. uh, sad. It's a very Middle Eastern sounding mm-hmm. instrument, yep. obviously, uh, and you have been very conscious in moving it into lots yep. of other areas of music. And I, for the most recent recording, for mm-hmm. example, the album Chameleons of the White Shadow, you were in New York and you recorded with some really incredible musicians, yep. uh, Bella Fleck, the uh, banjo player. Mm-hmm. Um, there was also Richard Boner, the, the bassist, um, Roy Ayres, the uh, the vibraphone player, um, Joey Di Francesco, Hammond organ. Now these are players that have come very much from a, a jazz background, mm-hmm. really. And I'm wondering how you integrate with those players on an instrument like that. Is there any tension about uh, how it actually sits uh, within the, the the field of sound? Well, I, th- I think it's important. I was I was thinking about it the other day. I think it's really important. It, it doesn't really come down to the instrument, but really the player. So it's, I'm really collaborating with people. You know, I'm not collaborating with a banjo or a Hammond or a vibraphone. I'm really collaborating with the person themselves. And they're, they're such great players that they can adapt to those things. And the Ud is uh, Middle Eastern. It's undeniably Middle Eastern. And so we have that platform. And I, and I thought about it the other day. I really usually only play or, or record with instruments which I feel are neutral in a way, so they, it's, uh, you know, I don't, I don't, I haven't recorded with a sitar or a Spanish guitar because I know that takes you to that region straight away. Whereas with this um, a kind of, uh, with these instruments, I- in a way, the players are so great. And that's hence why the title's called The Chameleons of the White Shadow. Chameleons being, you know, they can adapt to anything or adapting to the environment. And White Shadow was this idea which I had um, which is basically the elusive sound, the sound that all chameleons seek. It's it's the thing that, um, you know, they're, they're always looking for, the new sound. So basically chameleons are the white shadow adapting to something that is being created or hasn't been created yet. So um, that's how I feel the players are. And it is collaborating on many levels, not just with the instrument. And the album is about bringing uh, instruments which aren't usually with the oud, so banjo, Hammond organ, tuba, yeah. accordion. And these are instruments which you wouldn't expect with the oud, but somehow um, we make them work. And I think that's through the vision and through the, um, the help of working together with these players and sharing that same vision. It even gets funky mm. on this record. It gets funky. It does get funky. Yeah, add an A in there. It's funky. <laughs> it's funky. <laughs> That's a, <laughs> Which you don't expect from from the. Mm-hmm. I mean, are, are, are there precedents, or are you? No, well, that's the idea. You know, it's um, it's also working to people's strengths as well. You know, you get these players and you listen to them and you know them back to front. You know, when you listen to their music and and watch them play. So, um, you give them stuff that they're comfortable with, that stuff that challenges them, but stuff that they are familiar with as well. Because it's it's no use dropping someone in the deep end and then you know it, it really can be a fine line you know you can actually get a mishmash really if it's not planned well or done well um, exactly i mean you 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 you're looking right on the the verges of you're the verges of of disaster actually (laughs) right you're looking when you get hammond organ and wood and trying to make it funky well you go well you're in territory there that you know (laughs) people haven't gone there for a reason but if you really do your homework and and you really connect with the player like i joey de francesco i met in paris and we talked and i just the hammond player yeah the hammond player I, i just I thought, yeah, this guy. This so he's a, he's a guy that's played with Miles Davis in yep. in the past when he was a teenager. Still, uh, when you sit down to work out what you're going to do together, mm. what's the negotiation? Well, I write the tunes, so I've got the tunes ready in mind. I'll say, this is so Joey. I know it, and and I can feel it. And so I send him the tunes, and then we just talk about it. And they're really into it. They're really into the idea. And and Joey had never been asked by anyone. Like if from a, uh, an ethnic, or well, let's say ethnic, uh, eth- some sort of ethnic instrument to play with. So he was really stoked. He was like, well, this is time to really show um, what he can do. So um, I, I think, yeah, it's it's the player, the instrument and, and um, doing your homework of what they're comfortable with. Because if, if you really give people stuff that they're strong at, the, the recording will be strong. And, you know, we adapt to each other and we inspire each other. And then when we get to the recording and rehearsal, we know what we're doing and we have a 
an idea. And I think between us, I hope that we could probably uh, identify if it's a mishmash or not <laughs> at the time. So, um, no, but it was really great. And, and from the first notes playing together, we knew it was on. So. Is there any area of music that you won't go into? I mean, or are there other areas of music that you're keen to go into, which are, again, even further out there on the edge? <laughs> There's one area I probably won't enter again. That was improvised punk. Well, I think a lot of it is, but um, and yeah, I don't know if I'd venture into that again because there was a lot of feedback and stuff like yeah. that. A bit, a bit of craziness. And, but you're uh, interested in uh, in heavy metal. Yeah, yeah, I, I love that sort of stuff, and I'm at the moment trying to. Uh, hound a couple of big big dudes into getting together because a lot of those heavy metal dudes are playing middle eastern scales and they're shredding the hell out of it and you know i'm uh, i'm i'm a bit pr you know not prone to uh, shredding so um yeah i need a shred album about about time i had a shred album but um no yeah I, i'm really interested in that medium but of course for the ud to maintain its its integrity mm. in sound you know that's the most important thing not to lose or put it through a pedal and make it you know so foreign so I think it's all about collaborating with maintaining the integrity of the wood. So um, if we can make it happen and try and, and work it out, we'll see. But that one, I think, could be close to the uh, the disaster. <laughs> I don't know if ABC will be playing that on classics. You know? <laughs> Joseph, uh, thanks ever so much for your time today. It's oh, been, been great. Thanks, Robbie. It was great. Can we get maybe just one more song from you? Sure.
good stuff, man. That was great. Thank you. What was the name of that second one? Work. W-O-R-K. Beauty. The Inside Sleeve with Robbie Buck on RN.